Well, 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 looking here at the sun, looking for that eclipse. But it's not going to happen until Saturday, folks. Hey, I'm Mark Marquette. We thank you for joining us today on Stay Curious. I can't see who you are out there with these solar glasses on there. There we go. Can't see anything but the sun with them. And we're going to tell you all about the eclipse coming up on Saturday. Uh, all over America, you're going to see a little Pac-Man sun in most of America and across the great western states you're going to see an annular eclipse where the sun is far away won't cover it up the I mean the moon's far away it won't cover up the sun completely and there's going to be a ring of fire eclipse but well, we're going to see a Pac-Man eclipse here in central Florida and most of you around the country we're going to talk all about that we're going to tell you how safely to see the sun if you haven't bought these you can probably still get them at your local vendor that you use uh, to buy things online. I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee here and say hi to Marty Winkle, my co-producer, as we kick off another week of Stay Curious. Marty, how you doing? I'm doing good, Mark. How are you doing? Good. You were involved in the auction over the weekend, and we want to thank people uh, before we get into the sun. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Thank everyone. You participated in our space memorabilia auction. Marty, hand me that coin if you would have flipped that to me. You got that handy? Marty just paid for his uh, beautiful Robbins medal that he got from... It used to be owned by Woody Spring. You ought to find some way to take that out there and get him to autograph the case, Marty. This is just beautiful. Look at that. Look at that beautiful Robbins medal there. Uh, the seven, uh, STS seven, of course, with uh, out Fabian ride Thaggard on that. You met Thaggard, beautiful coin on there. Let me show the back side while you went up with that. All these are numbered, so if you ever see a Robin's coin, uh, we didn't show one like that. They're all numbered and, and beautiful. Uh, not all of them sold at our auction, so we'll see how they end up. But Marty, you got that one. Good luck and good for you to get that there. That was gorgeous. So we want to thank everybody. We're, we hadn't put the money together. There you go, Marty. Yeah, he's he's framing me in there for the shot. And uh, But we do thank everyone. This is money that we need to sustain our museum. And we are going to have a Galaxy of Giving campaign starting the 1st of November. We want to alert you that because there's a lot of people that are doing their campaigning right now. And we want to let you know that we're going to uh, have some uh, things to offer you for your donation at a certain level and we've got a new idea coming up here to reach out to uh, to our space workers here and maybe you have lunch and, and dinner with them at a location ask them questions and all that stuff so so uh, uh, we're into that time of season there we want everyone to have a happy season and we want you all to be happy with what we're doing here at the American Space Museum thank you for your contributions no matter how you give them. Uh, well, let's uh, ask you, what do you think this is behind me, Marty? Is this the latest image from the Webb telescope? Is this a possible star being born, or what's going on here? Hmm, it's got an edge to it. That actually is our star, the sun, all right, with a tremendous coronal mass ejection coming off of it during this active stage and we're going to talk about that at the end of the program after we tell you about this upcoming eclipse let's get into that right now the uh eclipse uh oh there we go the path of the annular eclipse october 14th 2023 what this chart means to you is find where you live which of these great states of our country do you live in? Let's say you're there, there in Ohio where my mother is. You see that line? It's going to be between 40 and 50% of the sun will be covered. So probably about right over the Cleveland area up there. It'll be about 40%. Detroit will be closer to 50. I'm looking at New York City, 30%. And it shows you the picture there of the bite that the moon is going to be taking out of the sun. And then for you that are out the Midwest from, uh, well, uh, Texas, over there at Galveston, all the way up to Seattle, that's where you'll see the totality. But it's not going to be the sky go completely dark because there's going to be a ring of fire. 
you heard of the super moon. That's when the moon is close to the Earth, uh, closest to the Earth at about 230,000 miles. Well, this is a micro moon, so to speak, where the moon is about 260,000 miles away from the Earth. So it doesn't look bigger and brighter like the super moon. It's smaller and less bright. Appreciably, you can't tell, but astronomers can. Anyway, it's enough that doesn't cover up the sun completely. And this is a huge coincidence of, uh, and there, uh, of, of, of just where we live on Earth. All right. The fact that the sun at 93 million miles away is about a half a degree across in the sky, takes up a half a degree of the sky, 93 million miles away at 800,000 miles across. And the moon, 240,000 miles away at 2,100 miles across, is also a half a degree across, exact same size as the sun is. And that's the only reason why we have a spectacular coronal around a total eclipse of the sun or even a close annular like this. All other planets, their moons just blot out the sun completely or the tiny moons of Mars, they pass in front of the sun. So this is kind of a real interesting thing that this is this way because uh, and if you say spiritual, you can say scientific, however you want to look at it. We're lucky at this time of human epoch to have the moon and the sun the same size in the sky because we've learned so much from it. Well, we're having a solar eclipse party on Merritt Island at the uh, Brevard uh, Visitors, uh, Merritt Island Veterans uh, Center. A beautiful facility there. Amateur astronomers from Brevard Astronomical Society and here at the American Space Museum, moi, will be on hand there to uh, safely look at telescopes uh, at the, through the sun. I meant to make up a big meme here. Do not look at the sun without help, without knowing what you're doing. Do not use dad's binoculars or rifle uh, uh, sight or anything like that that magnifies optically to look at the sun. It will cause damage and burn your eyes out. There's our disclaimer. Do not call any lawyers if that happens to you. Okay, we're it's serious. We do take it seriously. And over the 50 years I've been looking at the sun safely, I've had some close calls with actually burning up a telescope almost when I didn't, I, I was away from it too long. And as the sun moves and the telescope didn't, yeah. That magnifying glass called that eight-inch mirror almost started my telescope on fire. So I know what I speak of. Uh, we call it the Pac-Man Eclipse because it's going to look like that little character on that favorite uh, video game of a lot of us from the 1980s and 90s, Pac-Man. Eating up the sun as it goes across there. And uh, hello to Cliff Watson there. There's my mate down in Pomona, Australia. Great to see your smiling face, Cliff. He's at a solar eclipse party there when he posted this a couple years ago, maybe last year. Cliff, uh, we miss, uh, it was great to see him during the Great American Eclipse and meet him in 2017. And say hi to Dave Renicky for me. He's an astronomy outreach popularizer and radio host there in Australia. So Cliff, thank you for supporting our American Space Museum through your donations to stay curious and he has donated uh, money regularly to us from down under. Hope you're having a nice spring there and uh, enjoy everything. Uh, enjoy those fast cars too, Cliff Watson, that I know you're playing with. Well, here is a NASA poster that shows you we've got two eclipses coming up here within the next six months. Of course, the annual eclipse we're talking about is that band that goes across the western states. Uh, Marty, I texted um, our friend Charlie Walker, who I know lives in Tucson. He said he's going over to Santa Fe to be with some friends and be in the, the line of totality. So Santa Fe, New Mexico is going to be in totality. I, I, I said, Marty, Charlie, uh, Marty, I said, Charlie Walker, send us some pictures so we can show him next Monday. So maybe he will. Now, the other eclipse we see going across is going across a swath of our country that's got about three times the amount of population. And it's going to go through my hometown of Finley, Ohio, right up there uh, beneath uh, the glove of, of, of Michigan. And that makes me happy because my 91-year-old mom and I will watch the eclipse together April 8th, 2024. Though Ohio is about 50-50, it'll be chance of 
clear there in the springtime when it's raining a lot. It'll still be dark, and I still want to be with Mom. So she's 91, and that's significant to me because I'm going to be 91, I pray tell, when there's going to be an, another awesome uh, eclipse. I'll show you in a second. Here again, the Great American Eclipse, a swath across the country. Look at the line where you're at connected to the outer edge, and you see how much of the sun will be covered up by the moon. There's my alluding to it. 2045, Marty, if I'm 91 years old and you're you're over 100, 101, they will, I'll wheel you out in the chair and we're going to be under the mouse in Orlando because this eclipse is going right over central Florida. All right. It, people will be out of their minds in, uh, uh, there at the, the, the house of the mouse there. At Disney World, so uh, you know that's something to live for, look forward to, and live for. So three eclipses over America coming up here the next twenty three years. Again, this is solar glasses that I was wearing earlier. There, my solar glasses on here. I cannot see anything out of them. All right, they're made. They reflect ninety nine point nine percent of what hits them and uh, very safe to use okay this is the type of material we put in the front of telescopes to look at them safely but i again warn you do not look at the sun through any optical instrument you know you can't stare at it with your own eyes so how could you think you could do it with binoculars uh it'll instantly cause damage well we're in a phase of of the uh, sun where we're active sunspots are are very common and um uh these are some sunspots on the sun. We're going to talk about that in a minute as the sun is flipping out. The sun is literally flipping out as its north pole is flipping over to be the south pole here. And and uh, could happen tomorrow. Could happen at the end of the year. Uh, stay curious. I'll tell you more about that and the repercussions of it. Here's what happens during a total eclipse, okay, is the moon is between the earth and the sun. And the shadow cast by the moon hits the earth. Now, everything casts a shadow from the sun. I cast a shadow from the sun when I go outside. All right. The length of that shadow depends on how high the sun is up. But the, where this shadow lands from the moon depends on where you are on earth because it's a very narrow band and it only lasts uh, a few hours because the moon is moving and it moves away from the sun. Why don't we see an eclipse of the sun every new moon? Okay. Because uh, we don't see them every new moon be, uh, beca uh, because the sun is above or below. I mean, the moon is above or below the sun in our daytime sky. All right. The moon is in the sky right now. It's just it's going to be a crescent phase. You're going to have to see it about three in the morning to see it. All right. And that, but when it's new phase, when it's, let's say it this way, when it's full phase, everybody sees it all the time. When it's new phase, nobody sees it because it's right close to the sun above or below it. But twice a year, usually, some place in the world, it lines up just right that that uh, we can, that there's an eclipse somewhere. So, of course, that's not the scale. Very simple thing. Now, when the Earth is between the sun and the moon, our big fat shadow casts in space and the moon goes through that. That is a eclipse of the moon. The full moon goes dark. Okay. Here, the full sun's going dark for a solar eclipse. Again, showing you where you can see it. There's some really great places in Texas to see it. One is my sister's place in San Angelo. And shame on me for not planning a trip out there to see you, Sherry. But, uh, uh, I should have, and I didn't. But and then go and see it. Mom would make a great year on two eclipses there. But such is the life at this nonprofit that uh, we got a lot going on here, and uh, we'll make a visit another time out there to Texas. So you got Texas, New Mexico, Nevada, uh, Utah, parts of Washington State, and uh, are going to get hit by this again. The big one everyone's going to be losing their mind over is April 8th, 2024, uh, out across a big swath of uh, America, populace-wise. 
And there's how the whole thing looks like. These are the kind of pictures my astronomy friend Derek Demeter will be taking. He's the astronomer at the uh, uh, Emil Bueller Perpetual Trust Planetarium in Sanford. Uh, you see the moon on the left. Uh, we're going to see sunspots on it uh, on all the pictures people are taking because I'm going to show you here in a minute. The sun's just covered with sunspots. Takes his first bite out of it, 1158 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the time is Eastern Daylight Time is going to be from noon to 3 o'clock. Okay, so the first bite is, will be at, at about just before 3, and then the, the last bite of it will be about 3.15, something like that. So uh, in the West Coast, it's going to be a morning event, well, right around noon. So uh, it'll be a beautiful and a lot of things. Wherever you live, go find your local science museum or astronomy club. They will be the proper place for you to watch this. And you can just Google, and you'll just Google Sodal Eclipse Titusville, and you'll find a layout of what it's going to look like uh, and some exact times and has a little video to play to show you what you're going to see ahead of time, thanks to the, the miracles of computers. So you can do this for any city that you live in and figure it out for yourself. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of safe ways to look at this. And you can actually make a shoebox or take a oatmeal, round oatmeal can. All right. Literally, you poke a pinhole in, in uh, uh, put aluminum foil on the front. There, that's to reflect away any light. A pinhole, white paper in the back of the box. And then you just cut a little hole out. It, uh, uh, it, inside the box, you can even make a big box and put cover your head if you wanted, as long as you weren't blocking the pinhole. And you're going to see the sun projected on the paper. In fact, you put you can put a bunch of pinholes in a sheet of paper like that and see the tiny little crescents there that are on the ground. All right, I've seen leaves in trees uh, cast the crescent shadow of an eclipse onto the ground because how leaves are all uh, covered up together, they make little tiny holes that sunlight goes through. But this is a bunch of pinholes put in a sheet of paper. You can see it there, the crescents uh, just all thrown on a sidewalk. So very safe way to watch it. Now, if you do have a telescope, you can project that image. And here it shows you at a re refracting telescope. Uh, put a baffle. You see this lady's got a piece of cardboard uh, do not have your, you got to cover over your finder scope so it don't accidentally burn somebody uh, like a magnifying glass. But you can project it on a stand there, maybe a, uh, a sheet music stand or something like that. Uh, and uh, keep moving. Now, uh, the, the telescope's going to get hot. All right, there's solar projection with a reflector. All right, and just a white sheet of paper hung up there. You can see the, the circle of the sun there. An eclipse is not going on there, but that's a way that we safely show people sunspots. Again, another way to show it there. But you're going to have to make sure these optics get hot, just like if any of you used a magnifying glass to burn leaves or paper or chase ants around with. Of course, you would never burn those ants, you know. But you know what I'm talking about. Yep, this can happen in front of your eyes here. You can buy a few things, still time to get something delivered to you. This is a safe way to project the image. But this telescope has on the front of it a solar filter that makes it uh, there. Now, that's a Sunspot AR2570. That will forever be called that Sunspot for 2670, yeah. Who are, and uh, as astronomers give sunspots on the sun, a number that uh, follows them throughout its history so people can... And investigate them now holy cow freckles 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 all right uh that is this all of the sunspots in september marching across the face of the sun in one month so you can obviously see that it's the same sunspots that's marching across the same series of them as they move but you can also see like that top row how they changed as it got older now from left to right is about 17 days for a object to cross the sun as, as it takes about 30 days to go around once. So a lot of sunspots, the sunspot activity. 
there was a, it's caused by a uh, a known cycle, uh, just called the sunspot cycle that peaks every eleven years and then has a valley every six years. So these are sunspots that are identified. Uh, these are sunspots a couple weeks ago. We had a big naked eye sunspot there. Now, as the sun sets and gets in the smoky atmosphere of the Earth, you know that last half hour or so, you can look at the sun with your eye. Don't look at it with maybe a camera, but uh, you'll see sunspots on there. For over uh, 300 years, we've known that the sun has a cycle of, of peaks and valleys where you have sunspot numbers on the vertical in the year on the bottom. And it's an ele they call it, they've numbered the cycles, right? We're into cycle 24 on the right. It was just starting to peak right here. There's the number 23 was from 1996 to about 2009, 11 years, something like that, where you got, and things peaked up to over a hundred sunspots, uh, number, uh, and then down. All right. What causes this? We don't know. It's a very quick cycle in this, this sun of ours that's 4 billion years old. So we don't know if it's been doing this all of its life cycle or really what it means. That's why we need people to study solar physics. Look at this beautiful. No, that's not a cantaloupe I had for lunch, Marty. That is the surface of the sun in hydrogen alpha light. The sun is 99% hydrogen. We don't see it like this because we look in visual light. Uh, and this is what the surface of the sun actually looks like, oatmeal boiling, sort of. And this is a sunspot that's going on. And that, that white area is called a prominence. And that prominence that you see next to the dark sunspot in the center, you look at the edge, you see a prominence sticking up like a, a, a fountain going on. That's what these objects are. John Small, a local amateur photographer, took this photograph. Here's another local amateur photograph. I think it's Steve Rissmiller's uh, of this uh, prominence coming off the edge of the sun. Yes, you could call it a flame, but it's actually material that comes off these sunspots that are cooler up into space. And you see it's detached there. Well, where's it going? Well, the energy of the sun. It's And you're going to not believe what I'm going to show you, how the sun affects the earth and all the planets with what they call a current. There's all this invisible energy, radiation, so forth out there. And we can pattern it and, and follow it. And this could, if this would hit the earth directly, uh, three days later is how, is how long it would take. It would not, it would really cause some problems with our electronics that we're so dependent on. A mass coronal ejection like this has wiped out a whole power grid in Montreal back in the, the 80s, I believe. Well, this is one of the classic solar photographs taken in the space age. This is from the Skylab telescope. Marty, tell our, uh, our producers that we need to do a story on Skylab and his 50th anniversary before Jack Lausma gets back to Earth on the second mission here. Uh, we will do some uh, Skylab 50th anniversary that we're doing right, that's going on right now. Uh, so, but this was taken by, uh, I think, uh, Skylab 3 astronauts, uh, uh, more specifically, uh, 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 Ed. Uh, yeah, Ed's last name, Marty. Gibson. Huh? Ed Gibson. Gibson, thank you. Ed Gibson. I was thinking Baker, and that's not right. This is the sun. This is a a uh, solar dynamic observatory that's orbiting the sun a far distance away. This is what great telescopes in outer space on satellites makes it look incredibly wild. And what is weird about the sun is it's 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface, but its atmosphere is over a million degrees around it. And that atmosphere you see during total eclipses during the corona. Well, let's talk here about a minute. I've got some notes finally on something that I don't know much about that I got to have notes for. The sun's flipping out, everybody. Yep, right before our eyes, the sun's magnetic poles are disappearing. Its uh, recent measurements by NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory reveal a rapid weakening of magnetic fields in the polar region of the sun. 
North and South magnetic poles are on the verge of disappearing. This will lead to a complete reversal of the sun's global magnetic field, perhaps before the end of the year, perhaps before the end of the week. If this were happening on Earth, there would be widespread alarm. Past reversals of our planet's magnetic field have been linked to cal calamities ranging from sudden climate change to the extinction of Neanderthals. On the sun, it's not so bad. Well, why would the poles changing on the Earth mess up things? Well, it mess up GPS satellites. They could come crashing down. Uh, you'd have all kinds of things running into each other right now because of our dependence on this. But we'll talk about that later. We're talking about the sun. In fact, it's routine, said a solar a physicist. This happens every 11 years or more or less, and we're on the verge of solar maximum. Uh, no two polar reversals are alike, is what the scientists say. Sometimes they're swift, uh, taking only a few months for the poles to vanish and reappear on opposite ends of the sun. Sometimes it takes years, leaving the sun without magnetic poles for an extended period of time. And uh, what, what's, well, we've got a, a magnetosphere that uh, bounces off some of the harmful solar radiation that we're talking about. Indeed, uh, this scenario is playing out right now. The sun's south magnetic poles almost completely vanished, uh, but the north magnetic pole still hanging on uh, as, as we speak right now, okay? Okay. Um, so here is another chart. We've got to have a little science on backyard astronomy here to show you the strength versus time over a five-year interval. All right. Uh, so during this solar cycle, in the years there, there's December 23rd. Okay. Uh, there's December 2023. And then over there's 2075. All right. So uh, uh, we, we don't not understand what's going on. But our sun is a star. In fact, it's quite a small star. It's actually in a dwarf star category, like we call Pluto a dwarf planet. Uh, uh, but don't tell the sun that. It'll get a complex about it, okay? It's the biggest, brightest thing we've got going and the reason why we're here. Uh, but here's an amazing thing. What is this, Marty, some flipped out uh, picture here? This is the sun and the earth. And we call this the uh, the heliospheric sheet, all right? One way we feel the reversal of the sun's uh, poles is this heliospheric sheet. We are surrounded by a wavy ring of electricity that the solar wind pulls and stretches all the way up to the edge of the solar system. This structure is part of the sun's magnetosphere. During field reversals, like it's going on now, the current sheet becomes extra wavy and highly tilted. As the sun spins, we dip in and out of the steepening undulations. Passages from one side to another can cause geomagnetic storms and auroras. All right. Well, this is incredible to think about. All nine planets are inside of this uh, heliospheric sheet that's described. Uh, circles the sun's equator like a wavy skirt around a ballerina's waist. Uh, boy, astronomers can certainly be poetic, can't they? Uh, this is a sprawling surface where the polarity of the sun's magnetic field changes. You have small electrical flows within this sheet, about uh, 10 uh, angstroms, uh, uh, 10A slash M squared, to put it correctly. The thickness of the current sheet is about 10,000 kilometers near the Earth's orbit. That's about 60,000 uh, about 6,000 miles thick due to the tilt of the magnetic axis in relation to the axis of the sun, the heliospheric current sheet flaps like a flag in the wind. That flapping current sheet separates regions of opposing uh, po uh, of, uh, pointing magnetic field called sectors. And Let's leave that at that before we get into Star Trek sectors in the universe and stuff like that. But it is fascinating that we know so little about our sun and what's going on in what we call space weather. This info chart, not expecting you to read that, just to be impressed that there's the sun over here on the left, our Earth trailing a magnetosphere behind us. All the planets have this, and one of the 
interactions of the sun with our planet is the beautiful auroras that many of you have experienced up in Canada. Uh, I know Bill Whiting's watching. Bill, he's seen aurora up there in Michigan. Uh, so is Dave Stange up there in Michigan. Uh, Carlton Bailey, I don't know if you've seen any aurora or not, buddy. Dave Forrest is in California. Thank you, Dave, for watching. We got Tom Usiak, Cynthia Rossi, and Gary Gerald. Some of our great fans watching. Steve J, thank you for watching, Steve J. Uh, and uh, we appreciate everybody sharing today. Our program uh, with, on Backyard Astronomy about our sun, uh, our favorite star. Uh, I've shared this before that I had a boss one time that I was telling him that the sun is just a star. You know, like the stars you see in the sky. And, and I remember he looked up at me and he said, Mark, everyone knows the sun is the sun. It can't be a star. And I said, well, you're my boss. So just uh, I'll let you believe that until I don't have you paying my check, side of my check anymore. Uh, but, you know, some people just don't have that, 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 that uh, and that's okay. Some people just don't think about physics and and the physical nature of our universe like like I do and like we try to get you to think about it here on Stay Curious, particularly when we show the Earth and this gigantic star that is constantly bombing the Earth with its energy and its its radiation and its electromagnetism and this is harmful to astronauts. And uh, we've got some shielding up on the space station and do some other things to protect them. It's harmful to you travelers on uh, around our world, including the pilots out there, like uh, uh, the all out there, so uh, which uh, can only get so much radiation. So sun is much neglected, but uh, we certainly do miss it when it's not in our skies and behind those clouds. So we're praying for no clouds for October 14th, wherever you're at. I wanted to mention that this is Neptune, the technically eighth planet of our solar system. These are observations the last six years during the solar cycle where they see activity on the clouds of Neptune being more active when sunspots are more active on our sun. Two billion miles away, the energy of the sun and its periodic shift uh, uh, of its poles and the activity of sunspots changes the atmosphere of Neptune two billion miles away and there's the evidence for it. So when we're talking about global climate change, we need to think about what's happening on the sun today as things are getting a little warm and are going to be that way uh, from our sun for the next two or three years. Well, again, hope that the weather's good wherever you're at this Saturday. It's a big football Saturday wherever you're at. If you enjoy football or baseball, we got the baseball playoffs going off. Also, basketball and hockey. Don't want to leave ever anybody out of the big sports there. So, like I said, look at where you live. If you live up there in, let's say, uh, oh, up in uh, uh, North Dakota, up there, Marty, on the, on the border there uh, next to Minnesota, you're going to get 40%. Uh, coverage on that eclipse up there. We're going to have about a uh, little over 50% here in Florida. So everybody send us your pictures of what it looks like. We'll be happy to share them next Monday on Stargazer Mark as we stay curious and stay star curious. So Marty, thank you for a great show. We have anything we need to clean up over there. Well, we got a comment from uh, Carlton Bailey. He said, looks like no Starlink launch tonight. Team Psyche launch taking priority. Starlink looks like pushed to Saturday with an opening window at 6.05 p.m. All right. Thanks, Carlton. We had a scrub last night and these noisy rockets going off about every other third day. Uh, thank you for keeping on top of that CB. He was looking forward to seeing that rocket launch tonight. And he said they pushed it back all the way Saturday, huh? And you can watch those online, too, on some of the the channels out there. Well, thank you for keeping us up on that. Thank you all for watching our program. Uh, tomorrow we've got uh, th uh, talking about uh, Apollo 7, I believe. Uh, Wednesday we've got uh, Terry White is going to talk about the prep. He's our orbital processing facility guy that worked on the shuttles. 
as one of the managers there. Terry White's going to talk about hurricane preparations and some of the hurricanes that have damaged Kennedy Space Center property over the years. Marty, one final comment or question? Yes, Cliff Watson turns 64 today. Chris who? Cliff Watson turns 64 today. Cliff Watson, happy birthday, mate. I knew there was a reason I saw your smile and face and wanted to put it up there. Well, you're a few solar orbits behind me, brother, but but uh, keep eating those healthy brekkies in the morning and don't eat too, too much kangaroo meat, and you'll make it to my age, all right? Well, thank you all for watching this Stay Curious. Until tomorrow, I'm Mark Marquette saying we can't wait to see you in our museum to bridge the space between us. Let me get them glasses on, Marty. Woo! Sunspots today. <laughs>